guys, unless you're really rich and you can afford to pay someone else to put everything together for you, this is what your Flip FPV Pro is going to start out looking like. All of the stuff you see right here comes packed in a sealed plastic bag, all the parts. You get choices on the color of your arms. I chose orange for uh, no particular reason. And they even go so far as to give you your battery tie-down strap and a screwdriver in case you don't have one. Landing gear, a sealed bag of all the little screws and standoffs that you'll need, and of course the different parts of the frame. The most important part are these, the instructions. Now I'm not going to show you how to bolt this thing together because uh, Hover Things has done a great job of doing exactly that. The challenge is not bolting it together. The challenge is installing all the electronics. So anyway, why don't we go ahead and start installing this, start putting it together, and then when I get to an important part, I'll stop and uh, point out uh, some tricks and tips to put things together. Are right, some other things that you're going to need. You're going to need four motors. These are 2216s. These are left over from um, a, um, a TBS build that I did. These are 900 kV motors. One thing you will need to buy is a power distribution board. This one's by Lumineer. I think it was four bucks. Makes your life a lot easier if you got one of those when you start soldering all your power in. You're going to need some ESCs. I've got the brand new Roto Geeks. These are 30 amp and these are flashed with version 12. Uh, I need to flash these with version 13. That will enable one shot. One shot's a faster way for your flight controller to talk to your motor so you get faster response on throttle. I'm going to install this Vector. It comes with a beautiful OSD. I've used these in other builds. Very easy to install. This is not ready for one shot yet. It's in the works. But when, when they do make the upgrade, my ESCs that I'll have installed are already going to be there. You'll need some kind of video. This is a 5.8 with the antenna. It uh, doesn't really matter. They all pr work pretty much the same. You're going to need some kind of receiver. This is an easy UHF. Again, it's what I had in my parts box. It's a long range uh, receiver and it'll work just fine for this. And you'll need some kind of FPV camera. And this one is an FEO V. 46 bucks. Can't go wrong. So there's all the parts that we're going to be putting on here and that guys is what we're going to be talking about how to tie all these things together onto this frame so we can make it fly all right that wasn't too bad it took about five minutes um, you're probably going to have some extra pieces like i did it looks like hover things gave us a few extras because sometimes this stuff vibrates off uh, during flight you can help guarantee that won't happen by putting some thread locker on the screws like i did and then maybe you can avoid having to replace them the other thing you want to pay attention are the cutouts on your arms. If you, if you like them all lined up the same way like I do, do it now before you put everything together. It would be kind of a pain later on. Because the next step, we're going to go ahead and mount our engines, lay out our ESCs, and put our power distribution board in place. So go ahead and bolt that down and let's start talking about soldering. All right, that didn't take too long, but now we've got to start making a couple decisions. Do we want a nice clean build where all of our ESCs are buried deep in the body of our flip? I mean, all we're going to see out here are wires. Or is there some reason to put our ESCs and mount them out here in the arm? Well, the answer is you're good to go either way, quite honestly. Um, I am going to be forced to mount my ESCs out here on the arm because my wire on my motors is a little bit short. I can't stretch it all the way up into the body. The other reason I'm going to put it on the arm is I don't like using bullet connectors because they're infamous for having cold solder joints and failing during flight. So what I'm going to do to get rid of basically 36 points of failure, I'm going to cut off these bullets that are on the engine. I'm going to solder my motor wires directly to the ESCs. I'm going to mount them out here on the arm where they can stay cool from the prop blast and then we'll run the wires into the body of the flip and then we'll worry about soldering everything right to our uh, power distribution board. So make your decision, zip tie your ESCs down, and go ahead and connect them to your motors, and then we'll continue from there. All right, it's kind of starting to look like a quad. Pretty easy stuff, just a couple of things to keep aware of. Your front right engine and your rear left engine, they need to turn clockwise, and these two need to turn counterclockwise. So how do you do that? Well. Let's, this is a, an ESC, and coming out of the ESC, you have three wires that go to your motor. So the red one is one, yellow is two, black is three. So for your front left and your rear right, just connect them in that order, one, two, and three. For your front right and your rear left, all you need to do is cross two of the wires, just like that. doesn't matter which two, and that way when they're crossed, these two will go clockwise, which is exactly what we want. All right, now, 
Next step, just go ahead and size everything, cut everything to length, and solder everything to your power distribution board. Alright, you get done soldering, it should look something like this. The only loose wires are your four servo wires. We'll thread those up through the next plate when we get to that. But before we do that, the last thing we're going to need to do is connect our battery right here, the plus and the minus. Just get yourself a lead, put it on there, and solder it on. And let me back out of here. And then it'll just go directly out the back of your quad. Now, mine will be just a little bit different. I am installing a vector which has a current sensor. And this current sensor is a little bit too tall to fit under the plate, so I'm going to mount them on this next plate. And I'm going to attach my battery wire onto the current sensor like that, feed it through the wires, and then I'll be soldering it exactly the same place you will. The only difference on this one is I've put on this, these nylon sleeves just to keep it, it just makes it look cool, it doesn't really serve any purpose, it just neaten up, neatens up the build and makes it look uh, a lot better. Anyway, go ahead and uh, solder on your lead, and then put your top plate on. All right, we're moving along pretty good right now. Go ahead and install your four uh, vibration dampeners. And then on your clean plate, go ahead and put in your 10 uh, standoffs and tighten those down. I urge you to use Loctite on them. And then once you've got that done, thread your wires up through your clean plate and set it down just like that. And put your four nuts on the vibration dampeners. And then we're going to worry about hooking up the uh, flight controller. Alright, this last step is where you can kind of let your imagination run wild. I've gone ahead and clipped on the legs. Very easy to do. They just snap right on. The reason I did that is I've got the pigtail installed on my current sensor, and I'm actually going to be putting my battery beneath here and strapping it on underneath. That way I can use the battery to balance uh, the quad once I get everything together. Okay, try to get your flight controller just as absolutely close to the center as you can. I've decided to put my receiver right here, and that way when the lid is on, the receiver antenna is sticking clear back here. I'm also going to put my I really haven't figured this out yet. I'm going to put my video transmitter back here somewhere and either drill a hole to mount my antenna here or I'm going to drill a hole on top to mount the antenna up there. Anyway, I want to keep these antennas apart and definitely I want to keep them away from my GPS. So my GPS is going to be probably on the front as far forward as I can get it on the quad so there's no interference between the video transmitter between my receiver and uh, and that GPS antenna. Shouldn't have any trouble, but uh, I'm really trying to avoid mounting this thing up on a mast. I want to keep this thing as aerodynamic as I can. In that spirit, I certainly don't want to put my camera hanging up at the top. Instead, I think I will mount my camera beneath the front where my GoPro goes. And that way when the GoPro's there, it'll stop a lot of the vibration. And it'll ha actually have the, exactly the same view as my GoPro. Just be directly below it. So go ahead and figure all that out, wire everything in, put your lid on, and let's see what it looks like. Alright guys, before I put the uh, top on, I thought I'd show you what I ended up doing. I went ahead and just used the existing slots, there's a whole bunch of them that they put in here for us, and I used them to zip tie down both my receiver and the video transmitter. The video transmitter is probably one of the most fragile parts on here. It's held on with two or three solder points right here. I've broken a lot of these on my little 250s. What I learned to do is to use like one of these little extensions. So I just extended it and I drilled a hole on the back of the frame and I just put my antenna there. That way if it does, well not if, but when it does wreck, because I do that a lot, <laughs> at least it won't snap off the uh, connection here. It'll tear up my antenna, but that's it. I won't lose a $70 transmitter. Uh, up on the front, a little bit different. I decided not to put my camera on the bottom. Instead, I decided to put it on the side, kind of like they do on the TBS. And that way I can take my GoPro, and it's lined up almost perfectly on the center of the frame. So I've got my camera and my GoPro side by side. The other reason to do it, I just got to thinking, I do crash a lot, and I like to fly low. If my camera was hanging down here and I impacted, you know, a rock or something, you know, that $40 camera is going to be the first thing to, to impact. I'd rather avoid that if I can. Anyway, fellas, there you go. My GPS, I will go ahead and connect it, and I'll show you the final hookup when I get the top on. Well guys, there you go. Two hours and ten minutes from the box to almost ready to fly. I just got to do some tuning on it. Um, everything really seemed to go together very easily. All the slots were in the right places to tie things down. All the holes were in the right place to feed all the wires. I mean, it's very well engineered and very well thought out. 
I gotta say there are a couple of things I think I'll change before I fly this one. Um, mostly aesthetics. These standoffs are 38 millimeter, and if you look in there, there's a lot of air. There's no reason it should be that tall. I'll probably get some 25s and lower it down, give it a sleeker look. It really won't make it go any faster, but it'll look faster. That's that's a part of it. Like I said, it weighs uh, 1,233 grams as you see it right now without a battery. I'm probably going to dump these legs. I'm not a fan of having legs on my quads. My battery's going to be on the bottom here. Uh, so I'll just land on my battery, no big deal, um, and save that weight. The other thing I'm not really excited about, uh, the recommendation is to secure your GoPro with the rubber bands, and I didn't do that. You see, I got the zip tie on there. I'm still not real happy with that. Um, I can't, I just can't in good conscience secure a three or four hundred dollar camera with the rubber bands. It just doesn't, it just doesn't feel right. So I want to figure out something better, a little more elegant, but other than that, this is a really well-designed quad. It could easily fly with a rubber-banded GoPro, no problem. I'm just not a fan of it, that's all. Well guys, this is what I've come up with. I just wasn't comfortable with uh, securing a $400 camera with rubber bands, so I came up uh, with what I call the camera couch. Let me move that prop out of the way. It kind of looks like a couch. My Both my camera, my GoPro, and my flight cam sit on this. I've got a 15 degree angle built into it, so when we go into high speed flight, I'll be able to see a little bit more of the horizon. This is secured to the frame with four M3 screws, and also between the camera couch and the flip frame, there's some adhesive uh, vibration absorbing tape. So that kind of works out really well. Lastly, I have a zip tie on there to hold my camera on, and also is the third way to secure the camera couch. I don't think this is going to come falling off, well, at least until I crash into the first telephone pole or tree. The other modification I made to it, again, move this prop out of the way, I took the metal uh, two-inch standoffs off, uh, and I put on these very, very light plastic 25 millimeter or one-inch ones. I think these are going to be a lot more aerodynamic, and I think it looks a lot better as well. So there you go, fellas. The total up, all-up weight on this thing without a battery is 1,183 grams. Uh, if you want one of these camera couches for your own, uh, you can get it. I'll put a link to it. Uh, put it on Thingiverse. You can download the file and print it yourself. I'll also put up, I designed this case for the FEOV. It's a pretty new camera. I think it's one of the first cases. I'll put the link for that as well. Very, very light. That only weighs about four grams, so you can download that and print for yourself as well. Anyway, fellas, there you go. The Flip FPV with the Aerial Works modifications. Appreciate your time. Gentlemen, fly safe.